Um, no injuries to report, so everyone's full go. Good to go. So go ahead. Uh, mistakes happen, uh, sets happen. What do you think was the most important part after the defeat against the Falcons, which was the last one for you guys? Um, we came back and played better the next game. I mean, thought we had a pretty good lead there in the fourth, and um, they ended up winning a hard-fought game. They played real well. We came up short, and um, that's how football goes. We've had a bunch come down on the last play. We've won more than we haven't, but um, same as any other week. A lot of the attention goes to on defense to you guys' is pass rush and pass defense, but uh, as an offensive coach, how would you? How much trouble would it be to go against your run game, run defense, and what challenges does the run defense uh, provide for teams? Um, I mean, I think it's a challenge to go against our defense in any aspect. Um, you know, the way our rushes and stuff, you know, that's why it is a little bit harder to throw, especially with our coverages. Um, but it's very tough to run the ball against, too. We've got good players up front, got very good linebackers, and uh, we have a scheme that can get us in an eight-man front at any time. With Kyle Juszczyk, he does so many different things. Do you ever uh, kind of tempt fate a little bit as far as putting too much on him? Like, can you put too much on a guy? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, he'll say no, um, but but you can. Um, but we put a lot on him, and we haven't put too much on him yet. So he's been able to handle it each time. He'll, he'll say that's because because of his Harvard education. Um, but he he's a hell of a football player who um, doesn't get nervous about anything, and he works very hard throughout the week to understand everything. And um, if he doesn't have it on Wednesday, he'll always have it by Sunday. The majority of, of players and you, I mean, it, it's your first time in your current role in, in this scenario, but you guys seem very loose. But what's, what's the key to not feeding into the idea of pressure? Um, just, um, I mean, keeping it real about what this is. It's, it's, a, it's a football game versus a very good team, which is what you pretty much have to deal with every Sunday. Um, and that's what we have to deal with this Sunday. Um, so it's not getting caught, in, caught up with... I mean, if you sit and watch TV all week or you read your phone all week, yeah, you might start to realize, oh, my gosh, that's one of the only games on. Everyone's talking. And maybe you could get caught up in the wrong stuff. But um, that stuff has nothing to do with football. Um, it's all what happens on the field. And whether it's a preseason game, the first game, or this game. And I think that's how guy, our guys have attacked it all year. So some of the players say that you let them be who they are. And that makes them play free and have fun, not be stressed out. Is that a conscious thing, or is that you know, is that good for any group that you would ever coach, or is that something you can do with this group? Um, if, I mean, if, if people can't be their true self, it's going to be hard for them to be their best self. Um, so you try to let people be who they are, um, but you better like who they are also. Um, so it's, it's, it's cool the players say that, but it's also pretty cool that the players have made that easy for us. Continuing that theme, one thing that I've seemed to pick up on is that a lot of these guys call you Kyle. They don't call you Coach Shanahan or anything like that. Is that a, a, something that you like? Is that something that you want? And what does that say about the environment? Um, I mean, it would probably make me more uncomfortable if they all refer to me as Coach. Um, I think that most of them do at first, and it's not like I, I totally address it, but I don't, I mean, I'm sure some of them do. I don't even notice. It comes off pretty natural for everybody. And um, I mean, I think it's that way a, a lot, uh, a lot of places. It's, it's not really unique. I think most of the people call Dan, um, Dan, where, where I was there in Atlanta. Um, but no, I mean, I'm glad they're comfortable with me that way, and it'd make me real uncomfortable if they never address me by my name. Did the Smiths transform Green Bay on the edge similar to the way Bosa and Ford did for you? Um, yeah, I mean, they definitely I mean, they added two very good players, which anytime you had two good pass rushers, it makes the defense a lot better. Um, you know, I think they were, you know, we went against them last year and they were a tough defense. Bringing in those two new guys has made it that much tougher, and they've just continued to get better and better throughout. You know, they've had some, they've invested some young, um, some draft picks on the secondary, and those guys have all grown. And having Mike there um, going into his second year, uh, he's done a great job with the defense, and um, the whole package has um, gotten a lot better, and it's so tough to go against. And those two guys are probably were the icing on top of the cake. What are the responsibilities you have now being a head coach since becoming a head coach? How do you watch the film and prepare differently than you did when you were a coordinator? Um, I'm just a little bit later in the week on stuff. Um, I, I had a routine so 
um, minute by minute, you know, being a coordinator for nine years, um, I knew what I was doing every second from Monday all the way to kickoff. Um, and that um, was different. I realized I couldn't do that when I got here. I had to do stuff a little bit later. Um, had to, it's been awesome with, you know, especially offensively on the offensive staff, you know, with the game planning. Um, like Mike LaFleur and Mike McDaniel helped me so much with that um, stuff that they can get ahead of more on Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm always there with them. Uh, but sometimes um, I know it a lot better by Friday and Saturday um, with every little aspect of it where I used to have it down before the player, players even came in on Wednesday. And I tried to do that early on, but you start to realize so much other stuff comes up. And if you hold everyone back, then the game plan's not as well um, put together as well. So you got to have people you can count on, people you trust. And I'm fortunate to have that with a bunch of good coaches. DK Jones was a big factor against the Packers last time. How happy were you with how the, the middle of the line performed <laughs> Uh, against Minnesota in plays where he normally would have been there. Uh, yeah, they did a good job. All our guys stepped up. Uh, we brought in Earl Mitchell, who came in. He had about 10 plays, which and he did a great job in his 10 plays. Um, but I, I was real happy with that. It'll be a huge challenge this week, and um, I don't know who it'll be, but we'll, we'll need everyone to play well. Coach, what would you, like, you like out of Solomon Thomas, particularly Kyle? Seemed like he got in there pretty quick, a couple plays. Yeah, so Solomon just, I mean, he goes as hard as he can on every play. He's running around, and um, he caused a lot of havoc in that game. Um, I don't know how much on the stat sheet, I think he was, but um, I didn't really look into that. But I know when you watch the tape, um, he's moving around. Um, he's picking people off, and when he is in, he's making some plays, and um, he was very active. Do you have a quarterback claiming his first conference championship? Do you think he's ready not, not only to handle the pressure that comes with a game like this, but also to per se throw the team on his back if the situation were to call for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's proven that throughout the year. Um, just because this game's called a division. Um, Champion NFC Championship game. Um, last one was called a divisional playoff game. Um, other games are big games too. So, I mean, I know whoever doesn't do well, that's what people say, but um, it's, it's just a game like all the others. Oh, there's a, a video clip that's become popular on, on Twitter this week of 2014 with the Browns. Patton looks to you and says, I think we should run it. And you look at him like, are you kidding me? Um, and then you pass it. Good job. Nice. <laughs> that was the most nervous play call I've ever made. <laughs> anyway, uh, is that in any way representative uh, of the relationship you had with Mike? And, and if not, kind of what, what was it like? I think it is. I mean, I think that shows how uh, cool of a guy Mike was um, and is. Um, and the head coach is going to always um, pop in here and there and tell, tell a coordinator to do something. And I promise you, I'm. I know what my role is, and I always do what they tell you to do. Um, but some, I mean, it happens to me with Sala a lot too. You know, I'm not involved with the defense a lot, and I get in and see a couple things. And I want to do something, and I really hope that when I tell Sala something, if he strongly disagrees, I really help, hope that he tells me that back. And then I have the decision to say, I don't care what you're saying, do it anyways, or I listen. And um, and that's how Mike and I were. Um, Mike could see probably by my facial expression, I thought we should pass. Um, and we had, and he trusted me. Um, if, if he didn't care, he would have said no, and I would have called a run. So um, I think it's very important for a play caller, whether you're on offense or defense, to have that relationship with the head coach because I'm, I'm very nervous sometimes to just hop in and tell Saul to do something because unless you're in it all week and you're looking at it down in and down out and your mind is coming from that point of view, when you just jump in something real fast, sometimes it can be the right answer. But I want to make sure I have confident enough people that when it's not, someone tells me they don't believe it is, especially someone that should have more expertise than me in that area. Um, and if you do have that confidence, then you're not afraid to tell people that because you know if you're wrong, um, you hope they'll tell you back. In places, especially as a coordinator, where you didn't feel as comfortable to contradict the head coach. Um, no, I've had some. I mean, it, it was it was tougher. Probably, I mean, I was only at quality control and. Um, Tampa Bay, so I definitely never called a play. And Houston, when you're working for an offensive head coach, it's a little bit different. Um, so that was probably harder. Um, working with my dad, I don't think he ever one time did it, so it was um, pretty cool doing that. Um, Pet was great, and um, Dan never one time. Um, Dan was awesome to work for. You're, you're going into the plays? NFC Championship game fully healthy. and, and um, I'm Ben Peterson, obviously, mm -hmm. is his first year of the job. How difficult was it during the season to maintain that conservative approach with the long view in mind while, you know, maybe getting D back late in the season or push. I mean, how difficult was that balance to say, 
you know, we, we can sit this guy this week knowing we might need him later on? Um, I, I don't think it was that difficult because I didn't think it was that conservative either. I, I just thought that was the option. It was the only option that we had. Um, I mean, when, every, when someone pulls a hamstring, I don't think you're being conservative by not putting them out there. It's just that's how it is. You get the MRIs, you see how much fluid's in there, and um, you, you can't really push those things. Um, Ben's been great in um, you know, what we did in training camp and in the reps and stuff we did, which we adjusted things, um, ended up doing the same amount. Um, but it was neat to, you know, you have beliefs as a coach and stuff, and you have experience as a coach, and you do stuff for a while, and you take that all into account, and then you hear a lot of scientific stuff that takes me a while to understand, but eventually I get it. Um, then you try to balance that out with reps and stuff, and in the long run, you get to the same point. It's just how you get there, and um, it all made a lot of sense. I think it did help us. Um, we still had a number of injuries through this year, but I don't think that's always up to trainers and stuff. I think most of that's up to God or whoever decides that stuff, um, but I know we did as good as we could with that stuff. When you, when you look across um, all, all pro sports, the track record of really great players who become GMs or executives is, is like pretty spotty. But what have you observed about John and kind of the way he goes about his his job? The job that because of his career he did not really you know, need, I guess. Um, I mean that's that's why I was so excited to come here with John because um, I mean John had a to me a dream job where you got to work. I'm guessing, I don't want to fit anyone because I don't totally know it, but I'm assuming you got to work about three days a week and you get paid about the same amount of money. And um, he had a great deal there living in San Diego and um, called me out of nowhere and um, said how interested he would be in an opportunity like this. And um, for someone to want to leave that to come into this line of work, um, I was so impressed because I knew the reasons he wanted to do it. Um, you don't know always why someone wants to do that and things like that, but John, it was clear. He loved football. He loved being around it. He wanted to be with the team, and he wanted to build it the right way. And when you know someone's intentions are that, and it's someone as smart as John, as talented as John, John's a very unique person. Um, I call him Captain America because um, it's true and how, how he acts and stuff, but he's like that all the time. It's extremely genuine, and uh, when you're like that, you're as good of a player as he was. You're as smart as he is. You have the passion he is. Um, probably got a better personality than I do, so I think we balance each other out pretty well. Um, I knew he'd be very good at it. Um, and John, when he comes in, I mean, he's not a huge ego guy where you're going to come in and know he's not acting like he knows every single thing to do. Um, he knows that he got here and had to rely on a lot of people like, you know, like Martin, who's here, and Adam Peters, and um, these guys who've helped bring him along. And um, John's made it his own and really um, feel very lucky to be able to work with him. Talking about how Jimmy Garoppolo is the same guy every day when he comes in here. How important is that for the trickle down to the team heading into this game? Uh, I think it's huge. I think that's why our guys follow him, like in any instance. I mean, Jimmy's struggling or if he's balling, like our guys, I mean, our guys would do anything for Jimmy. Um, and it's how he's been since the first day he got here when um, we traded for him for New England and he got here and we were an 0 9 team and didn't know much what was going on. But um, they just gravitated to him right away. And I've seen nothing change, I've only seen it get stronger. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, guys.